Good morning, namaste, uh, very good morning to all of you. Dr. Rajendra Shinde, founder director, Green Terry Foundation and former director, UNEP. Professor Balram Pani, Dean of Colleges, University of Delhi. Professor Shri Prakash, Director, South Campus. Dr. Mamta Agrawal, Advisor, All India Council for Technical Education. Dr. Vikas Gupta, Registrar of the University. Professor Ratnavali, Dean Academic Affairs. Respected Deans, Head of the Departments, Principals of different institutions, distinguished invited guests, respected delegates, members from Green Terry Foundation, faculty members from various universities, departments, and colleges, administrative officers, officials of University of Delhi, my friends from media, and my dear students. Good morning again. On behalf of on behalf of 100 years old institution that is University of Delhi and institution of eminence, I welcome you all in the university. As we all know, we have uh, recently completed 100 years, established as a university in 1922, with very few departments, and now we have 86 teaching departments, 91 colleges, and we have more than 6.25 lakh students in the university, and including about 6,000 PhD students. Now, coming to the topic of the uh, workshop, this topic is very relevant, very important, when Delhi and its entire NCR region has become a gas chamber. So time is also very relevant right now. Delhi and its surroundings every, uh, has become a gas chamber. Four crore people are suffering badly. There is no clean water in Yamuna. There is no clean water in Yamuna because after taking out 100% water from Hathnikun Baraj at Tajewala, Haryana. So if we don't have the flow of clean water, how can we expect something very good for the environment from a river? But very old river, very pathetic situation of groundwater. In short, in short, air is polluted, water is contaminated, and it is better not to it is better not to talk about vegetables, not to talk, talk about food, because experts will talk about that. And Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General, has said, "Humanity, humanity is on thin ice." And he has rightly said, humanity is on thin ice and that ice is melting fast. Humanity is on thin ice and ice is melting fast. Our world needs climate action on all fronts. Everything, everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once. It means what policy is one thing, issues are secondary, but beyond everything is now climate actions are required. That's why these four words have become important, reduce, reuse, repair, and recycle. And India has used these four words in G20 summit also, that if we have to improve things, then these four words are very, very important. And similar things, the concerns of Antonio Grutis, Bashir Bhatt has rightly said, shohrat ki bulandi pal bhar ka tamasha hai. Shohrat ki bulandi pal bhar ka tamasha hai, jis shaak pe baithe ho, wo toot bhi sakta hai. We have to realize this. We have to analyze this. We have to understand this. So climate change is now 1.2 degree Celsius warmer than pre-industrial times. This is data. 1.2 degree warmer. And UN has calculated that world will be 2.7 degree warmer by by 2100, it means in the next century, considering emission control pledges also. It means considering this emission control pledges, it will be still warmer by 2.7 degree. Climate change leads to floods, storms, landslides, and droughts, which we are experiencing. And India 
when we talk about net neutrality, UN Convention on Climate Change in Glasgow, India took a pledge that India to reach net zero emissions by 2017. It means after a few decades, we should be net free, net zero emissions. And US took pledge for 2050. China said 80% reduction in carbon by 2060. So reducing carbon emission to net zero. Here this net word is very important. Because when we say reducing carbon, we could have said that reducing carbon emission to zero. It is not possible. But you know, net zero. And what is the effect and impact of this net zero? That will be discussed in this workshop. But we need, we all understand and we need carbon-free future. That's why the initiative and transformative movement of net zero university campuses, this is a very small step in that direction but very important step of net zero university campus is very timely, important and essential. I would like to thank Green Terry Foundation and Prakash Javadekarji, former Minister of Education for such steps for universities and other higher education institutions. The initiative is mentored by, not only by Prakash Javadekarji, but also Dr. Eric Solim, former Under Secretary General of the United Nations, and the spearheaded by Dr. Rajendra Shende, who is here, founder director, Green Terry Foundations, and former director at UNEP. The Green Terry Foundation is a global and local forum for action by youth and communities on the challenges faced by the planet's ecosystem, particularly climate change, biodiversity, health, and inequality. It is indeed a wonderful initiative, and I would like to thank Dr. Rajendra Shende for, for spearheading this movement. To act on global environment challenges, we need to make climate changes a people's issue. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji got this exactly right when he said that the conversations about the environment and climate change needs to move from conference tables to dinner tables. It should become a people's movement. People should understand, people should, re people should discuss, debate, deliberate in classrooms, in universities, dining tables, so that it will become a movement and mission for every country. And there is no better place than university campuses to sow the seed and nurture PM Modi's life mission and India's net zero targets of 2017. Achieving net zero, we need technology. And we are doing, as a nation, we are doing very good in technology. And, and we may, we will develop appropriate technology for net zero in future also. But some technologies are available which we should use in the practices. But you know, the first step here is what? Every campus should be zero liquid discharge campus. Zero liquid discharge campus is a first step to achieve the net neutrality, which is the highest possible thing uh, expected from a university system. When I was Vice Chancellor of Delhi, Univers uh, Delhi Technological University, we decided to have a zero, uh, uh, decided to have a zero liquid discharge campus, meaning thereby we established a, a sewage treatment plant. So the, the total sewage water of the university was processed, oxi uh, oxidated, and after that it was used for flushing as well as horticulture purposes. 100%. So we were not uh, 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 giving any water, uh, any water in the municipal drains, first. Second is the energy, uh, waste to energy plant. We established a waste to energy plant also, meaning thereby the waste generated in terms of uh, plant waste, organic waste, waste from mess, waste, waste from houses. Those waste, uh, waste were processed and today also uh, wastes are being processed, converted into methane. Methane is used for the generation of electricity and then uh, the, the ashes uh, are used to, uh, to uh, convert into compost. And this compost is used in uh, the horticulture uh, requirements of the university. Third is the solar. Solar uh, energy, 
but you know, the contribution of solar energy was only 10% because lifestyle changes in the Indian system, now air conditioning and uh, many other things, we are using uh, electricity very heavily and if we feel that we will be able to replace through only the, uh, uh, only the solar energy, it seems to be difficult right now, but yes, we should, we will take appropriate steps. So that campus has become a zero liquid discharge campus, but not uh, net zero uh, carbon emission campus. But yes, first we have to achieve this target. Every college of University of Delhi and, uh, and university campus also, first please aim for zero liquid discharge campus and after that uh, take appropriate steps, which uh, many steps will be discussed today. Because new and clean energy, both are important for us and uh, when it comes to laboratory research also, we should do research also in the areas. Our challenges is to enhance, but you know, the countries, the developed countries, they exploited many things because we are very different society, but now we also want to be a developed nation. It means what? From a lower income group to the higher income group country. It means growth rate is very important for us. And, uh, but our challenges now, uh, our challenge is very different because they could attain those objectives without giving any, uh, uh, you know, concern for sustainable development goal. But for us, we have to one side attain the growth rate also, no compromise on the growth rate, but without compromising the sustainable development goals. This is the challenge for our country and the replication of Western ideas Replication of Western ideas, thoughts and instruments may not be very useful in the most populated country of the world because our situations are very, very different. See, we are, uh, it, it's a uh, country of 140 crore people. So the policies, the analogies, the processes, thought processes of Western world, we should not replicate mindlessly here we should develop our own systems, own instruments, own designs, own methods. Then and only then, we will be able to achieve growth rate. We will be able to achieve the status of the developed nation without compromising the sustainable development goal. For that, we need a balanced approach. We cannot take any extreme. We have to have a balanced approach now. Resources, we know uh, now uh, in G20 also when we said, Asudhaev Kutumbakam, one earth, one family, one future. It means we have, uh, and in the Indian culture, uh, it is in, by, in, by, imbibed in the Indian culture, but we have to, we have to implement it. That's why this balanced approach is very, very important when we are discussing about anything related to net zero emissions also. We have to keep in mind that India is a country now. For us, yes, this is important, but we have to eradicate poverty also from our country. No compromise on that. Another 10 years, two, two decades, we have to focus on that also. So that's why this initiative is very good, but only concern here is a balanced approach. I, I have quoted many times uh, uh, a few lines, a couplet, uh, about the balanced approach. When we are implementing anything, we have to remember that ki zindagi mein aisa kare ki kaam dono ka chalta rahe. Zindagi mein aisa kare ki kaam dono ka chalta rahe. Hava bhi chalti rahe aur diya bhi chalta rahe. So we don't have to take any either extremes. Either extremes are dangerous for us. Not doing anything is also very dangerous and doing everything is also very dangerous for us because our utmost priority first is to eradicate poverty from our country. This is, but yes, we are very concerned about the climate change. We are very concerned about the other issues also. Many things have happened in our country because we have replicated many things. Like, for example, the air conditioning systems. I don't know how far. Uh, and uh, air conditioning system, we have also damaged, destroyed our rivers in our country because we, we replicated the Western model. But now think about it. But irrigation is important. Horticulture is also important. Water is important. But if we find water scarcity in the cities who are in the, on the banks of rivers. And in Delhi, we do understand that what has happened to Yamuna, you cannot clean Yamuna because there is no water in Yamuna. There is no clean water in Yamuna. But because uh, from uh, a policy directive, we are doing it. 
we have to rework, uh, rethink about such initiatives also, which Britishers did for us, and we are just following those things, taking out 100% waters from the rivers. This is only one example. We can have thousands of such examples, but yes, it's a very good initiative, and, uh, with, uh, and we should focus on our domain, like the university campuses. Most of us are students and teachers. We should make our university, our colleges of the university, as uh, a first a, a zero liquid discharge campuses, and after that, the net neutrality, all steps we should take which are necessary for that. I hope that this workshop will ignite, inspire, influence some of uh, young minds, and we will take necessary steps which are essential, essential for us to take in order to, in order to provide right kind of environment for our future generations. Thank you very much. Once again, I welcome all of you in the University of Delhi.